So then I also have, I have this practice channel here. This is one that I 3D printed. The soul Ooh, nice. is uh, the head of Cthulhu himself. The, it's all nice. plastic. I, actually, do I have a read in this one? I don't have a read in it. <laughs> Never you mind. Don't have a read. We don't have a read in any of the good ones. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, it sounds great. I mean, I couldn't hear a single mistake. No piper goes straight to the bagpipes. We all know that. We always start with a practice chanter. My personal first encounter with a practice chanter, I was a child, probably about nine or 10 years old. My dad went to the Scottish festival in the town where I grew up and came home with a light colored wood grain chanter with a white plastic mouthpiece on it. Yes. Maybe it was rosewood. Maybe it was balsa wood. Maybe it was just popsicle sticks. I don't think air went all the way through it when we blew on it. I think it maybe gave us some slivers. Might have been a discouraging experience for him, actually, if he came home excited, thinking that he and I were both going to learn how to play bagpipes. And then I don't know if he thought to himself, oh, this is not a good practice channel, or if he just thought to himself, like, oh, we're both miserable at learning how to play bagpipes. So yeah, yeah let's give up on that dream. <laughs> it's funny, right? So if you know absolutely nothing about the bagpipes, and then you get one of those practice chanters, basically the problem with it is it's essentially just a toy, yeah. and it doesn't really pertain to what we're trying to do. So it could be really discouraging, but let's talk about what makes that bad. So what makes that cheap practice chanter bad? Like we can list the things. I think the most important thing is if it makes a sound at all, it's, so I suppose maybe this one didn't even really make a sound or barely made a sound. Yeah. And in my right. memory climbing back, so maybe the problem was actually the read. Maybe if we'd switch the read out, maybe it would have worked, but, uh, yeah. And, and I have since then I had, you know, like there was a husband wife pair that came to the band's free class for a while and they were poor college students who just really wanted to learn to play bagpipes and they were sharing a chanter that looked very much like that one but with a little bit of work we got out a dremel on it and stuff cleaned some of the holes out it ended up working and both of them learned how to play yeah. quite well on it so yeah you know, maybe look at the draw stuff I, like that too but. i had one that i got and it was like oh with a couple pieces of tape actually sounded okay and i mm -hmm. played it for a while just to be strange but then the dye from the chanter started coming yes, off on my hands yeah. and <laughs> Yeah. So I think what makes the chanter a bad chanter will give us clues as to what would make a good one. Mm. So first of all, like it should, especially if you're a beginner, it should make a sound and it should make a sound pretty easily. Like the resistance of the reed shouldn't be too strong. Yeah. And then it should be without too much effort, it should be able to produce a good sounding scale that properly hits all the intervals of the pipe chanter scale this one here right it's like pretty much the bagpipe scale there it's nice and toneful you can hear the music in it with some chanters by the way some even some chanters that are supposed to be good that you pay good money for that people might recommend to you one of my criticisms of them is the note intervals aren't quite right so the high g is super sharp or the C or the F is super flat or something like that. And so right from the get-go, you're learning to play the instrument, but the actual notes that you're playing don't really pertain to good musical intervals that we're going to want. I remember it, this chanter, this was actually my first chanter that my dad gave me on my seventh birthday, I want to uh -huh. say, but I didn't really take any interest in it until my eighth birthday. But this is a nail practice chanter. It's very yeah. like short and stubby. And uh, I don't think no read in it right now, but, mm. but it's still a great chanter and uh, sounded really good. Although definitely in retrospect had a really sharp high G. Mm. So it took a while for me to not habitually under blow the high G because it was so sharp on the practice chanter. So we want to try and find one with really nice pure notes. If you're a total beginner or if you don't know what nice pure notes sound like, that's where a teacher or a mentor would come in really handy. Yeah. They could help you set you up with a chanter. And if you do have a chanter with some sharp notes, you can always use a little bit of tape on your practice chanter too. But that would be one of the things I would look for, for sure. And of course, some of the other stuff too that you might find on a cheap practice chanter would be the whole spacing isn't quite right or yeah. doesn't quite match what you're eventually going to graduate to on the pipe chanter. And then there's some mild PG rated debate about whether or not your practice chanter should have countersunk holes or whether they can just be like the plain drilled holes that aren't countersunk. 
Mm. I don't really have an opinion either way. I kind of, I like both types of chanters. Mm -hmm. But the countersunk seems to be what most people believe is what you should have because it helps get your hands used to the size of the holes. Right. It feels like um, a bigger hole. Yeah. But the, yeah, those are the main qualities that I look for. And then the main, the other thing for me now is I really like this uh, from Jordy, the Maverick practice channer here. They're uh, so pretty. I, it looks cool, right? Yeah. I think. And then it's got, you, you can't really tell watching the video here, but mm. it's got a nice weight to it that I really like. Mm. That sort of just feels nice and comfortable in the hands. This is a new Gibson chanter that's long, right? And it's got the countersunk holes and it's just a bit lighter. It's not, I don't enjoy playing it that much, but that could be different. That This could be something you really like. Sure, yeah. Uh, and just for whatever reason, I like the heavier. So you just, over time, you'll probably get a chance to feel a few different practice chanters in your hands and try a few. Oh, of course. Uh, and, like that's the ideal, right? If you have yeah. a chance to go to a band practice and just hold a few different people's chanters, look at them, you might find a preference coming up that way. Now, yep, when, yep. when you mentioned the notes, the sound being pure, maybe it's important to point out too, of course, it's nice when, if you're in a pipe band situation, if everybody has matching practice chanters and matching chanter reads, you can get pretty close to sounding the same. I kind of doubt that it ever gets really too perfect, but what you're talking about, to be clear, is the difference in the interval jump from note to note within that yeah. own chanter's system so that you by yourself yeah. practicing are going to have at least a pretty accurate experience yeah. of what it exactly. should sound like. Exactly right. Yeah. It should have that do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Ti, There's that weird do. one. Yeah, yeah. We got the flat seven. So it's not quite a do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, but pretty close. Yeah. It should have that sound to it, right? Mm. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. It should have that. Yeah. You know, you mentioned technically, the... technically it's not exactly do, because we have a <laughs> flat seven. We play the Mixolydian right. yeah. scale, so it's not exactly the same, but that's the vi general vibe we're looking for. It should be musical. Like, like you would hear uh, if someone sang a scale to you, it should sound the same as when you're practice chanter, when you're playing that scale. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to take us all the way down into whether or not our practice chanters ought to be, have equal temperament or just intonation for our intervals. Oh, um, we could. And then the practice yeah. chanter, technically, you would want it to be justly tuned just on paper tuned. anyway. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Now you, want you just tuned and not equal tempered. You mentioned you have that long one there. After my, my negative experience with the early practice chanter, when I finally got into classes and stuff when I was, I think I was 14, I got, man, now I can't remember the brand name. It's one of the big ones, one of the very common, you know, Durlin material, regular length practice chanters. Mm -hmm. I did melt the end of it it's that material is flammable i like with a lighter yeah. i lit the end of it on fire and it looks nice. kind of cool afterward but maybe wasn't as playable anymore and so when i the next practice channel which is the one that i still use most of the time was a long practice channel and at the time i felt like there was something about the long practice channel that was superior right like that maybe it sounded better honestly over the years i've come to think like anytime somebody says this practice chanter sounds so great I started thinking like, I feel kind of like that's a relative thing. No practice chanter sounds super great. It maybe sounds better than other practice chanter, but maybe that's just me. But some of like, them sound pretty good. Why like did the I think Lincoln Hilton, like Ooh, the Lincoln yeah. Hilton ES session, the session one. Yeah. Chanters, yeah. you know, that's something that's actually designed to sound like a professional instrument. It, it, isn't and that so, interesting that it's its own instrument? It like ceases yeah. to be a practice thing that you use just to get onto pipes or to get ready for pipes. It's, no, this is its own thing. And I guess you could treat any practice channel like that as a separate instrument. This is a thing and has crossover yep. applicability to this other instrument. Sure. But, uh, well, I mean, when you look at a small pipe, small pipe chanters are essentially just practice channers, aren't they? I mean... I'm pretty limited in my small pipe. Someone's going to get so, uh, yeah, yeah, someone's going to get fired up about that statement sorry right small, there, Andrew. Sorry, small pipers, <laughs> but you're really just, you're really just playing uh, like the beginner's goose. That's basically it. <laughs> Somebody's going to send Breja Campbell and some of the other like big dog small pipers right after you right now. Uh, I hope, I hope that people could sense that I was being a little sarcastic there. Yeah. But have you tried like a, like a, like a set of D small pipes, for example, mm. D like, like just the, the massive difference in hole spacing, right? Yeah. yeah. Such a big difference. Like, and it's an interesting my, exercise to go through that. Yeah. With my giant bare hands, um, yeah, the D small pipes are very tricky because it's much higher in pitch, therefore holes much closer together. So you you're see, like, you're work, working in a really small even, area. 
they'll change which fingers they're using. They'll take like a ring finger or a middle finger out and use a pinky to squeeze on Ugh. there better. Oh, yeah. see, this is just, this is one of the many reasons that you should just not play small pipes too much. <laughs> I need the screen to now go blank. It's just like, Jim has left the chat. Just, just, <laughs> just disappear now. <laughs> yeah. But what I about mean, you... white? Like, why do you think I had this idea in my head that long chanters were superior? Are they in any way? Was that a thing going on at the time when I was a kid? Or I think it's a, my perception. I think it's a, I think it's a man thing. Mm, it's a man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see. This is like a, like an unconscious psychological kind of thing that was going on. Yeah. I think all men and adolescent boys will have a phase where they really believe that a long practice chanter is the name of the game. And then maybe over time, it might become less about practice chanter length and more what you can do with it. I'm thinking. Makes so did much we sense. Just, yeah. Did we just uh, subconsciously set up this whole podcast for that joke? Uh, yeah. Yep. It might have happened. It was, it was also all leading thing. to this. All, also a man thing. We Men love these types of jokes. Yeah, but I think so. I think so. I think mm. it's just a man thing. Yeah. So then I also have, I have this practice channel here. This is one that I 3D printed. The sole Ooh, nice. is uh, the head of Cthulhu himself. The, it's all nice. plastic. I, actually, do I have a read in this one? I don't have a read in it. <laughs> you don't have a read. We don't have a read in any of the good ones. Yeah. But, well, it sounds great. I mean, I couldn't hear a single mistake. So then considering the, like all these, like we talked about the session chanter, which is made out of metal. We've got various kinds of plastics. We've got woods. Does that matter? Like in the end? Like you mentioned, for example, that you liked the feel of that Maverick, that it's heavier. Does that motivate mm -hmm. you to practice more? Would that be something sure. someone might consider when deciding what to get? Yeah, I think wood is just sort of always going to be more fragile than plastic. Mm. So if you have a little kid that's starting the bagpipes, maybe plastic is a good way to start, maybe. Or, or maybe you have wood anyway, but you know, you, you can learn a little bit of just being careful with your instrument and stuff as well with a wooden mm -hmm. one. The wooden one's going to be more fragile and more expensive. So you just, you're going to want to treat it super kindly and carefully. And maybe it produces a warmer tone or something like that relative to plastic, I guess. I would be more concerned about how pristine my bagpipe sounds and not super concerned with whether or not my practice chanter is producing like truly imm immaculate sounds mm. or something like that. But with all that said, I think as long as you're doing no damage to your development of your finger work, it should all come down to what you prefer and what you enjoy. A hundred percent. So maybe you enjoy the long practice chanter. Maybe with a short practice chanter, students are like learning with their elbows on the table and exhibiting really not good posture. Mm. So that might be an argument for having a long chanter that you can rest on your knee and maintain good posture. And mm. so there, there could be developmental points in there, but beyond that, it would be mostly just whatever you enjoy playing the most mm. and what feels the most comfortable on your hands. And that's a great point. Yeah. Have you ever tried a, a cane um, practice chanter yeah. read? Yes. I used one for a brief period when I was a pipe major because the volume was so much louder so I could be heard around the table. But that was a lot of work. I got my face was in the best shape of its life. Well, yeah. I was used that, that's for sure. Yeah, it is a good point. I was thinking that recently at the Worlds. Oh, the most difficult part of the day, stamina wise, is when we do the practice chanter run throughs. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, so playing practice chanter does definitely help develop your, your face strength. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for sure. 